few years back, a Pittsfield bylaw dating to 1791 was discovered. It banned the playing of several games, including baseball, in the vicinity of the town meeting house. And that's the earliest recorded use of the words baseball together by name in this country. So is Pittsfield the birthplace of baseball in America? Well, as Pittsfield baseball enthusiast Brian Johnson told Connecting Point producer Tony Dunn, America's pastime evolved as the nation itself was beginning and growing. The ball against the meeting house wall. The, the city of Pittsfield has a long connection with baseball. They're interlinked from its earliest mention to its to, to present day. It is a natural for Pittsfield, Massachusetts, to claim the cradle of baseball. In Cooperstown, New York, is the Hall of Fame. It's often thought about as Abner Doubleday is the founder of baseball, and he's one. But baseball is an American icon. Baseball parallels American history. John Thorne was the historian who found the document of 1791 in our library. It came out as the first mention of baseball. It's not really a positive thing. It, there were a bunch of kids apparently playing ball and breaking windows in the courthouse. So the court issued a document banning the use of playing baseball in that vicinity. And when they spelt the word baseball, they spelt, they spelt it as two different words. They put base and then ball, they separated. But in the same sentence is the first mention of the word baseball so far documented and authenticated in North America. 1791, with this mention, George Washington was president of the United States. Isn't that incredible when you think the first discovery and the mention of baseball coincides with the first president? And like the country, it's resilient. It goes through good times and bad times, but it's, it's, it, it's, its backbone never breaks. We're not claiming that we, take, we, we trump anybody else. It's just, a, it's just an evolution of the game. It's all symbolic. And the Statue of Liberty, though it's for the immigration coming in on the East Coast, it does not stand for the same values and virtues and opportunities for people who are now coming through on the West Coast. Once you embody something and embrace it, it's symbolic forever, and, it, and it's timeless. September 5th is the date of the document in 1791. We went as far as having a birthday celebration with a huge cake in the middle of town, <laughs> and we called it, and we sang Happy Birthday Baseball. John Thorne's document created a lot of excitement in the, in, in the community. Congressman John Alward got wind of it. He brought it to the Congress of the United States and made it official that baseball was the first mention in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. So these are all the things that we have the momentum to take it. We're not just creating something, uh, hoping to see if it can fly. This, this has legs to it. Pittsfield has a great history, not just the finding of the document, and it you know, just coincides with that, but looking through different things, the first collegiate baseball game was played. It was between Williams College and Amherst. It was played right off on North Street in Pittsfield, right by where Dottie's Coffee House is. And, that, and there's a plaque there now that's been put there. Wakona Park, Casey Stengel played in Wakona Park. More modern people, like Hart and Fisk, who are obviously retired Hall of Famers. But way back in time, Lou Gehrig hit a home run and it went actually into the Housatonic River and they never found the ball. So, you know, so that's the history back in the 1920s that Pittsfield has carried. It links it up through the collegiate levels and into the professional levels. And that's why Pittsfield, Massachusetts is the cradle of baseball. We could do more if we could uh, ever get it to be recognized like a Abner Doubleday. I mean, out of the middle of nowhere is built a Hall of Fame. What would Cooperstown be without a Hall of Fame? Uh, things can happen, and I hate to be uh, comical with this, but uh, you know, the old Field of Dreams, feel good story, build and they will come. And you know what? We're not gonna take down Doubleday Field in Cooperstown because it's in that journey. 
okay? I like to refer to as Pittsfield as it's Garden of Eden right now. Pittsburgh, baseball's Garden of Eden. If we call Pittsfield, Massachusetts the cradle and the genesis, the Hall of Fame can be the Bible of baseball. And there's a journey in between there. And that journey will always be timeless and always be a treasure to all people. And people can fill in that journey all the time. Thank you.